Hi, good afternoon and welcome to the Facebook Live session of the Boulder Community Health or Boulder Heart description today of the MitraClip procedure. My name is Dr. Shrini Iyengar. I'm the Structural Director here at Boulder Community Health and I'd like to just talk to you, everyone watching today, about our specifically new procedure that we'll be doing here at Boulder Community Health. The procedure is called the MitraClip procedure. This is not a procedure that is new as in it's FDA approved and it's been around for the last five to six years and I've been performing this procedure for the last five to six years, but it's new to the Boulder community. And it's an amazing procedure, which is minimally invasive and it's indicated for certain disease states. Now, before we talk about the procedure itself, let's discuss what mitral regurgitation really is. Mitral regurgitation is basically flow that has crossed the mitral valve in the heart that isn't going forward, but rather backwards. And that's usually because the mitral valve itself has become diseased or it's too weak to close properly. So normally when people have mitral regurgitation, the symptoms are usually shortness of breath, which can lead to things like arrhythmias or heart failure. Now, when we see people with mitral regurgitation, normally we can treat it with medications like blood pressure reducing medications or diuretics, things like water pills. The fact is though, in time, if the mitral regurgitation isn't treated appropriately or there is a dysfunction of the valve itself, what happens is these symptoms will progress despite medications. Now, the standard of care, if the mitral valve does get heavily diseased, is surgery. Open heart surgery is considered the gold standard when it comes to mitral valve disease when it's severe and it's symptomatic. Now here at Boulder Community Health, we have a phenomenal surgeon, Dr. Brian Mahan, who does hundreds if not thousands of mitral valve surgeries over his career and currently actively does mitral valve repair and replacement. So at this point or this juncture, if there are patients though who are too sick or are deemed to be too high risk for open heart surgery, historically we didn't really have a lot of options other than medications or open heart surgery. But now, with the introduction of the MitraClip to the Boulder community, we actually have another option for patients who are too sick to get open heart surgery, but still obviously need some therapy that can help them. So with that being said, what is the MitraClip? The MitraClip is basically a procedure that was developed as a minimally invasive approach to basically fixing the mitral valve regurgitation. It's based on a surgical procedure called the Alfieri stitch, which is just a stitch across the middle of a mitral valve to, to help it basically close properly and prevent blood from flowing backwards. So that being said, I would like to show you what the clip actually looks like. So this is just a model of the clip in its open form. Now it may look quite large here on the screen, but when I pull it back, you can see that it is quite tiny. It is very small. When you take a look at it close up again, I'll let you show you the perspective that basically it comes in a closed fashion. This is the open clip at this point. What we would do with this is this would be in the closed fashion. So we would actually be in this position. Once it's in the body, we would then introduce this across the valve in the open position. And what you see here are two things, the arms of the device and something called the gripper, which is the one on the bottom. We would then pull this back across the valve itself and once we see the valve is actually caught in this, lead, in this device, we would drop our gripper line, drop our clip, and we would then secure it. So this is basically what's left in the body after we basically deploy the clip. So looking at this, you might say, well, where exactly in the heart is this going? So this is our schematic or our model of the heart. And you can see clearly, if I can get this spatial orientation here for the camera, where the clip actually is. The clip is actually sitting right here. And that area here is the mitral valve. This is the mitral valve itself and the clip sits right below it. So what it does is it prevents blood from going from this area, the ventricle, back into the atria. And this area here, the left atrium, is connected to the lungs. Hence, when people have shortness of breath, it's because blood is coming from this ventricle instead of going out the aorta, which is the main artery of the body, which should go to your brain, your other organs in the body. Blood actually, unfortunately, goes the other direction to the atria, which then goes into the lungs and then causes shortness of breath. This clip then prevents that blood from going backwards, but rather keeps the blood going through the aorta 
and again, going to the rest of the body. It's important to understand that this is not a procedure that will take away the mitral regurgitation at 100%. We'd like to believe it will, but it definitely ameliorates the symptoms, makes people feel better. And at the end of the day, we are looking to improve the quality of life for patients who have severe heart failure-like symptoms with mitral regurgitation. And again, this is not a device that is used for patients who are currently surgically operable. These are for the high-risk surgical patients and not for the patients who basically would say, hey, I could benefit from a mitral valve procedure. Normally, they'd be evaluated by Dr. Mahan first, and then obviously if deemed adequate candidates, we would move forward with the clip. Now, this device is delivered via a catheter in the groin. So we basically place a catheter in the, one of the veins of the groin called a common femoral vein. Through the catheter, we then go into the heart and perform something called a transeptal puncture, where we then deliver the sheath and then the clip itself. This is all done under general anesthesia, and the patient does not feel any of these issues when we are accessing the vessel or puncturing the septum of the heart. Again, it's important to note that this procedure takes about an hour to two hours in length of time. Usually, patients are in the hospital for 24 hours, and there is no long-term anticoagulation therapy like Coumadin or Pradaxa or Eliquis that are needed after the procedure. So that's another positive about this, is that it's minimally invasive, doesn't require long-term anticoagulation, and the hospital stay is generally 24 hours. So this is one of those great little technologies that have come along in the last 12 years that really have changed the game for patients with severe mitral regurgitation. So again, we are now offering this at Boulder Community Health. We'll be going on the circuit real soon here, and you'll be hearing me talk about this in some community offerings to go out and talk a little bit more about the mitral regurgitation and mitral clip itself. Additionally, with TAVR, which is transcatheter aortic valve replacement, as well as a Watchman device, which is for left atrial appendage clot, these types of devices in Boulder Community Health has really differentiated this hospital from a number of ones in the country, whereas only a few hospitals in the country are doing multiple structural heart procedures. So I'm very proud to be part of this team and again, everyone here is really excited to offer this to our community. So we'll be available here at Bulge Community Health for any further questions. And again, I look forward to seeing you guys soon again. Thank you.